Okay, so the question I got is, how is intelligent design not a God of the gaps argument? Well, first of all, we have to understand what a God of the gaps argument is. This is simply the process of inserting God as an explanation when we have a gap in our knowledge about something. So, for example, if we're uh, going around and we see something maybe super complex in, in life or in biology, you might say, well, man, there's no way to explain this complexity, so therefore God must have done it. Okay? So we don't have enough information, there's a gap in our knowledge, and so we insert God into that to explain it. Now, intelligent design doesn't work like that at all. In fact, I'd argue it works in the opposite way. Uh, the definition of intelligent design is simply that uh, it is a scientific theory that attempts to recognize that certain features of the universe and of living things are best explained by, a, uh, by an intelligent cause and not an undirected process like natural selection. So notice, according to this definition, intelligent design is an abductive process, abductive reasoning, meaning you have a certain uh, set of data, a certain set of facts, and you ask, what's the best explanation for these facts? What's the explanation that has the most explanatory power? What's the explanation that can make sense of all of the data, not just a few of the data? And that's the way intelligent design works. So for example, um, this sort of abductive reasoning occurs in many fields of science, whether it be uh, archaeology or forensics, for example. Uh, if you have a detective who comes upon a crime scene and uh, he sees um, there's a man who's lying dead on, uh, on the ground, and uh, the detective has to say, well, what facts do we have here? What data do we have? And so he might notice the man has three bullet holes in his chest, and there's blood everywhere, and all sorts of other information. And so then he goes through the process of abductive reasoning. He says, well, what's the best explanation for this man's death? Could it be foul play? Could it be um, uh, suicide? Could it be it was an accident? Could he died of natural causes? What's the best explanation? Now, obviously, in this instance, since the man has three bullet holes in his chest, the most reasonable conclusion is that that man died because of foul play, that perhaps someone shot him with a gun. And notice, this is based on the presence of certain evidence that points in that direction. It's not that there's like no way to explain what's going on here. We have no data that's pointing that direction. We have a gap in our knowledge, so therefore, let's just suggest that there was a, a person, an intelligent person, who shot the man. No, on the contrary, it's the presence of information. I mean, certainly a man with three bullet holes could have died of natural causes, but it's quite unlikely, given the clear evidence of foul play, that there was an intelligent mind behind the process of that man getting killed. Well, the same is true with intelligent design when it comes to, say, uh, living things. What intelligent design does is looks and notices that there are certain features of living things that have the presence of information that point directly to an intelligent cause. So, for example, one of the areas that we see this in is in the information found in DNA. DNA is a four-character digital code. It's like programming language that literally gives all the information necessary to create every part of your body. And so, this is the way, this is highly similar to what we see in programming language, for example, in computers. Uh, operating systems and applications, smartphones have apps, these are all generated because there is a programming code, there is uh, information that explains how these things work. And every time we have programming code, we always have a programmer, an intelligent mind that provided that information. The same is true with blueprints for a building, for a house. Whenever we see blueprints for how to create something, we always assume that there was a, uh, a person who fashioned those blueprints in such a way to make that house stand or that structure to uh, be able to be built. Well, the same is true with the intelligent design with regards to DNA information. That DNA information is identical to the kind of programming language that we see in, in operating systems. And so therefore, it is the presence of that information which makes us reasonably conclude that there must have been a programmer who uh, put that information in there, who created those blueprints such that that cell or that organism could use that information to create its body parts or to allow its physiology to operate the way it does. So notice then that intelligent design is not based on the gaps in our knowledge. It's not based on the absence of information, but rather on the presence of certain information that gives 
that, that is a hallmark for, being, uh, for coming from an intelligent mind. And that's why intelligent design is not a God of the gaps, informa- uh, God of the gaps type of argument. Rather, it's based on the presence of information that leads us to the best conclusion, and that is that is an intelligent mind is behind what we see.